Hi, David Vlade here showing a few examples for Sage Intact budgeting and planning as it pertains to employee management. Uh, what I'm showing right now in my budgeting and planning uh, tool is a list of all the employees that I have set up inside of my Sage Intact environment. What's really nice is when I created this budget, I was able to put in the date range that I wanted to have listed for budgeting reasons. And then I was allowed to import in with just a checkbox all the employees that I have set up in my production environment. And so this all came in for me. You can see a list of employees there. I have my employee IDs that I saw over in my intact environment. I have salaries where I had that. And if I didn't have salaries in the system, I have the ability to add numbers here inside the table section of Sage Intact. And I can also see departments or funds where I have them tagged. That's because I have this in a nonprofit uh, setup. A couple things to note here. Uh, if I hit this little gear in the upper right, uh, you'll see some interesting things. Uh, one, there's the name of my budget. And don't forget, I can have as many budgets as I like. Uh, date range. This is interesting, but I picked a date range that spans two years. And I did that just to show off a little bit. It's a nonprofit budget, and my fiscal year is different from the time frame that I have loaded. So that's great. I can uh, do whatever I want there. I could have my budget uh, match my fiscal year, but I just chose not to in this example. Okay. All right, a few other things. So here I have all this information here about my employees, and this is all in this one big table area. But if I switch over to this main tab, I can take a look inside my system, and I can see if I back up a little bit, um, I can have my nonprofit budget. I can see I have revenues here. And in this nonprofit configuration, if I hit the drop down, I can see all of my funds. And then within the funds, I can see all the different revenue accounts that I have mapped over and budgeted for. Pretty handy. But I'm going to drop down here to my operating expenses. And you can see here salary and wages. And I have a little bit of information on those employees. So Miranda Lambert here, for example, if I pull up uh, that employee record, remember I have two years of budget information here. Uh, so a moment ago when I made up $80,000 a year of salary, uh, I can see that it has broken that amount down per month automatically over the course of the year. And I'm showing this as a preview of cash. So that's, that's why you see the negative numbers. Pretty good. So I get to do some fun things here. I'm gonna click on Claire Danes at the top here and I can see that she's employee number one. She has a base salary of $110,000 and she's my executive director. So some fun things here. Let's say I wanted to budget for, let's say a 5% um, uh, increase uh, in her pay. Nice and easy. There's that uh, yearly increase here. And if I click on that, I can type 5%, tab off that. And numbers changed. Remember again, that's over two years, but I just did it. I just did a change of a 5% for this whole um, budget period. Nice. There's a little formula builder here too. So I could hit this little uh, red arrow here and I could have some, a red, um, <laughs> I could hit that little uh, function button and then I could build a, a bigger formula. So if I had other uh, assumptions that I calculated elsewhere in the system, I could use those as variables to figure out what percent of increase we should have. Not applicable here. I don't have that set up, so it doesn't really matter for that example, but I have that ability. Let's complicate this a little bit further though. So I'm gonna take out that 5% uh, increase that I had and let's do a few other scenarios. So when I take that 5% out, so I take the 5% out and I'm right back where I started. Now I'm gonna go back to the tables area and I'm going to say a few things. Let's say I wanna have a cost of living adjustment of, I don't know, 4% and I wanna do it for my everyone in my outreach department all at once. So I don't wanna go in individually on each of my employees and have a 4% raise. So how can I do that? That's the first thing I wanna do. And the other thing is a moment ago when I added that increase, it was for the entire budget period. So that assumes that I started on day one of the budget and I had it moving out over the entire run of the budgeting timeframe. Let's say I wanna do that 4% cost of living adjustment, but I don't want it to start at the beginning. I want it to start mid, mid year, let's say. Well, there's a handy way to do that. Uh, first off, I could be here looking at departments and I could see like, who is in my outreach department. Let's say that's the department I want to give a raise to. And I nailed it down, narrowed it down. There I have narrowed it down to these three employees. Could be hundreds of course, but just three in this example. So a nice easy way to do this is I could hit this little uh, gear in the upper right budget settings. And there again is my 
date range for the budget. And there's my fiscal year. There is this advanced benefit section off to the side. I'll click on that. And let's add a cost of living adjustment. Okay, I gotta give a name, so I'll call it COLA. Great. And what kind of uh, increase uh, percent was what I wanted to do, but I could do an amount. And do I want this to be like a monthly sort of thing or on their anniversary date or what? I'm gonna assume, again, this is for all my departments. Let's say we all get it on a calendar basis. So I'll just leave that alone as monthly. And it's the same amount per month, that's fine. And I think I said 4% in my example. So there we go. And do I wanna cap that at all? Nope, that sounds great. And if I scroll down here, uh, which employees do I want this to affect? And here's where I was saying, I could click on my department and pick outreach. Okay, so I'm just getting my uh, cost of living just for my outreach department. And I could filter it further um, as a range of employees or whatever I want to do there. And there's the date range. So again, it's defaulting in for the, the full run of my budget calendar. But if I click in here, then I could say, let's start, oh, let's just remember May. So I'm gonna start in May just for fun. And I'll hit save. Okay. And the system is all set up to make another adjustment. So maybe I wanna give another department an increase. And maybe I should have named that different other than cost of living adjustment. I could have called it cost of living adjustment dash outreach or something along those lines, but this works. And I hit save. Okay. Base salary is the same. That's, that's all true. But remember, uh, if I want to go back to my main area, I'll go back to where those employees were. Let's take a look now. And interesting, so Claire Danes here has the same salary she had a moment ago, but under benefits here, starting in May, I see an adjustment. And if I were to scroll down a little bit, I can see that's the cost of living adjustment from settings. So that there we go. And I'll, I'll just prove that it went everywhere. If I go to Heidi Klum, uh, same type of deal. Her has She has a different percentage because she has different dollar amounts but hers also changed. Great. A few other things, just to point out uh, some interesting things along these lines. Uh, let's say um, that Heidi here, she's not gonna get that cost of living adjustment. So I'm gonna come down here, and even though the other uh, employees in this department have it, I'm gonna come down just on her employee record and hit this little trash can icon on the benefits, and I've removed it. So now if I scroll up to the top, that little benefits section is gone because I don't have that uh, listed anymore. But let's say instead of doing a percentage increase for just Heidi here, I want to change her base salary and say that she's going to go from $90,000 a year to, I don't know, 92,500. And she's going to start with that increase as of, so let's say August of 2021. Let's say that's okay and I'll tab off. Okay, and now that I've clicked off that, I can see if I look up here in my top line, I have the same amount going all the way through every month through July of 2021. And then sure enough, I hit August of 2021, just like we said before, and I can see the pay has changed. And this is a little great as you can imagine, so I can keep going. If I wanna say that uh, in August of 2021, her pay will go up, but then I wanna make it go up yet again. Um, let's say this time in um, November of 2021, then so be it. And the number is now, if you kind of look across, the, the same amount all the way through July, and then it changes uh, in August, and then changes yet again in November, just like I said. Great. And just to complicate it a little more, just to let us know what we can do, I can, um, if you can look at some of these fields here, I could award some uh, other, um, I can award a bonus that we want to pay, a one-time bonus. I could still do that cost of living adjustment on top of everything I have so far. Um, but if I scroll down, one other thing I'll, I'll say is let's say that in this case, Heidi here, her pay changes uh, in November of 2021. And let's say uh, because of that, I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and uh, break her down. So she's yes, she's in the outreach department, but I also wanna break out some of that spend here, some of those costs for uh, Heidi to be a little bit in another department. So I'm gonna hit the little plus symbol here. And we'll say, you know what, for the year here, we're gonna say that she's only 90% uh, in the outreach department and then she's gonna be in the youth center for another 10%. And I could keep going again, yes, that plus symbol, so I can keep breaking that down further and further. 
But now when everything syncs up here, uh, I'm going to use the dimensions that I have set aside for my department to take those numbers that you see up at the top to break them down by department. Pretty great. And just maybe one more thing to show how things are connected. If I go back to my tables over here, see all my employees. Remember, you can see there's um, Blake Lively here, our controller. There's no pay listed for her, and that makes sense. Um, but take a look up top, Heidi Klum. Remember, I changed some things. I took off the cost of living adjustment that uh, other people in the same department were getting. And I made those changes back on the employee record to break her pay down between two different departments. And you can see that's already happened here, which is great. And maybe one more thing I'll show. Um, so Blake Lively is our controller. Uh, she has no salary here. So there's nothing in Sage Intact, which is fine. And I showed earlier that I can enter an amount here pretty easily. Um, but let's just say I want to, um, if I were back over in that main area and I saw Blake Lively, like you see here, I can click on Blake's record and Blake doesn't have any, um, any pay listed, but I need to fix that. So I will just make up an amount here. We'll say $98,000. That works great. I tab off that. And again, it's breaking it down. It's a yearly salary that I put in. If I wanted to put it in as a monthly salary, I could have done that too. But there we go, and it's taken the, the amount of money and put it at the top, and again, for two years, you can see that that's stretched out. Perfect. And all I wanted to show here is, now if I go right back to my tables, there's the amount. So everything does talk to each other. It's all squared away, and you can see that all. Uh, I also like to do this. If I click on the Sheets option at the top, I can actually see everything in a grid. So here I have my revenue and operating expenses here, and I have that for all departments, all funds, all grants, and so on. And if I were to expand the operating expenses, I can see all of my per employee amounts that I have from everything else I did. Now, at when it rolls all up for budgeting purposes, I can see my top, top line amounts right here that go all the way across. But if I wanted to see how I got to a number, I could drill in and see that as well. All right, just a quick example. Hopefully this is helpful and hopefully you can see how the Sage Intact budgeting and planning tool can work for you.